Hey guys, Clint Coons here, and in this video, we're going to talk about how do you document the contributions you're making to a limited liability company. Okay, let's get started. Now, if you've looked at your LLC, you probably have an operating agreement that may have what is referred to as a Schedule A, um, or maybe it's an Exhibit A. It's at the back of the operating agreement uh, after the signature page, and on that page, typically it's going to list out who the members of the LLC are, and they're gonna to wanna to know contributions, okay? And they're typically wanna also know ownership percentages, depending on how your LLC is set up. So it has this schedule. Now, not all operating agreements are structured this way. Some may actually incorporate this into the actual operating agreement itself. Maybe in an article two, it says here, you know, below are the following members, and it lists out their ownership percentage and their contributions. And so a lot of people, when they see this, they get hung up on having to complete this Schedule A because they don't understand what it actually represents. So for example, let's assume that I set up an LLC for, for myself and my wife, and we put our names down here, Clint, Tracy, all right? And you know, ownership, well, of course, you know, she's gonna step in and say she owns 90%, I only get 10%, okay? So uh, happy wife, happy life. So she gets the 90%, I got my 10%. Now the contribution. So how much did you contribute to this LLC? Well, if I put in real estate, well, you'd list the real estate you contributed. But if you put in cash, let's say we started out, we opened up a bank account and we put in uh, $1,000 into our bank account. Well, what I would typically do is on this schedule, I'd put 900 from her, 100 from me. So. Next week, we decide we're going to move in $30,000 into this limited liability company. We're going to put that into the LLC's bank account. This is where problems start to arise. When people look at this, they think, okay, what do I do with that extra $30,000? I need to put it on this Schedule A somewhere so we know that I put in $30,000. So do I take 90% of that, put $27,000 here and put $3,000 here and scratch out this or something like that? The answer to all that is no, okay? You see, this Schedule A and all this stuff tracking contributions, when it's just you or you and your spouse, it's not relevant. It doesn't matter, okay, that you keep track of it. All that's going to be covered on your tax return. You, it'll show up there. Your CPA is going to ask you. Well, it depends on actually how it's structured. If it's a disregarded entity, it's not even relevant. It's only when the entity is set up to be treated as a C-Corp, S-Corp, or partnership that we, you may want to track this. But on this contribution schedule itself, your tax return will typically cover all of that. So why do they include these in the operating agreements and why are you getting all confused when you're looking at it and then thinking, hey, you're messing something up and somebody's gonna pierce the veil? Well, it's because nobody typically explains it to you that this type of, of tracking isn't that important until you're in a situation where there's a joint venture partner meaning it's not your spouse, it's not just you. You're bringing something, someone else to the party. So let's assume that I set up this LLC and it's between myself and my partner, Toby. So Clint's here, Toby's here, and we're both 50-50. Now, the reason why we wanna keep track of our contributions to the LLC, why it's important, is because just because we're 50-50 owners, it doesn't mean that we're both gonna contribute the same amount to get this company started. Many times when you're setting up uh, LLCs, I'll have partners tell me, you know, Toby's gonna be doing a lot of the work, right? Clint's not gonna be doing a lot of the work. Clint's putting the money in. So Toby possibly contributes $5,000 to, to this joint venture LLC, but he's gonna be working and finding the deals, and I'm putting in $95,000 to help fund that first deal. So even though we're 50-50, you see, I've put in more money. And then maybe four months from now, there's another deal that comes around and I need to contribute another $100,000. So I'm gonna mark that on my schedule. So I'm gonna keep track of mine that I'm putting in. And the reason why you want to do this is twofold. The first reason is that when it comes to distributions, Right? Let's say that we liquidate the LLC and we sell all the assets and we have $300,000 inside of our LLC. A lot of people will look over here and say, well, you guys are 50-50, so you're going to split it 50-50. 150 to Toby, 150 to Clint. Well, that's not the way LLCs work. 
the first thing you're going to look at, and this LLC, by the way, is going to be treated as a partnership for tax purposes because there's two of us, all right? I, I should have said that earlier. Um, what's going to happen here is we're going to take this $300,000, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, how much have the members contributed to that LLC versus how much have they pulled out? So if I put in $195,000 and I never took a nickel out of it, then when it comes to distributing out the 300, the first 195 is gonna to go to Clint, okay? Because that's repayment of what I contributed. Toby, if he never took any money out, he's gonna get $5,000, so that's gonna to go to Toby. So now we're made whole. I got all my money back, Toby got all his money back. Then with the remaining amounts of money, which is gonna be uh, $100,000, that's when we're going to split it 50-50. So I'll get 50K to Clint. Toby's going to get 50K to Toby. Now, some people look at it and say, well, Clint, you actually received $245,000. No, I didn't. All, right? All I'm doing is I'm being re repaid. So when you're working with someone else, it's key that you keep track of the money that goes in and goes out because these numbers will fluctuate. Let's assume that we borrowed money on a piece of property and I took out $100,000. Well, then that's going to wipe this out because I'm no longer owed that. I, I took hundred k out already on when we did the refi. So in this example here, then instead of getting 195, I'm only going to get 95 and that's going to free up $200,000 to be split 50-50 on the sale of the property if that's uh, um, on the liquidation of this company. So when it comes to LLCs, tracking your contributions, if it's just you, your spouse, you don't need to worry about that unless it's treated as an S or a C Corp. Then you're going to need to track it and you're going to do that with your CPA. But if you're dealing with a third party, if you're going into a joint venture, typically it's going to be a partnership. You want to keep track of that. The other reason why you typically will do this as well is that if I made an obligation in order to have my 50% interest to make a contribution of $95,000 and I never make the contribution, it's going to give you a means then to go back to that other partner and say, listen, if you don't contribute the money, you're out because your money was contingent upon that $95,000. I mean, your, your ownership interest was contingent upon that $95,000 contribution. You didn't make it, so you're not a 50% owner. So you can't claim you're entitled to 50% of the profits in a future date. Can kind of get down into the weeds, but I just wanted to lay out for you, documenting contributions can be important or not so important based on who are the members in your limited liability company. All right, guys, again, if you like the uh, video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And if you want to set up a strategy session, check the show notes. we got a great link in there. We can set up a free strategy session with someone at Anderson to look at your situation. Take care.